Hey, 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 it's W5HRO. I decided to do a video series on this uh, PAL351 BDX amp that I'm going to restore and modify for uh, use all the way down to uh, 20 meters if possible. Uh, I want to work with my friend uh, in Oklahoma and some other people. And I want to try to, uh, primarily I want 17 meters, which this, these things used to work stock all the way down the bottom end of 15. Of course, they were primarily designed for the CB market. They called it a ham 10 series, but of course their, their target market was CBers. And they, this was a quick, dirty way to get a lot of power out. This thing's rated like 300 watts carrier out with the 600 watts peak envelope power. So, and they used the old 8950 tubes. It had three, it had, I'm sorry, it had two, uh, if I can say this right, it had one driving three. There we go, one tube driving three. And it yielded about 350 watts out carrier on high power. And that's pretty good. If you look at this thing too, it's very compact. It's a very small amp. And my, my, my sole reason for doing this is I want to be able to run my Linko transceiver into it. I want to get enough power out. I don't want to spend money now. I'm going into, you know, I've gone into semi-retirement. I just want to get my antenna project done. And the 20 meter dipole that I'm going to put up is going to be a multi-band dipole. The one that's going to be hanging down at a 45 degree angle from the uh, 80 meter vertical. Uh, and I got some stainless steel wire and I'll show you that in a minute. But, uh, I'm going to, uh, actually, uh, use that i mean it's going to have it's going to be fed with some 300 ohm uh, ladder line because i wanted lightweight stuff some 18 gauge i wanted lightweight and it's going to come down to a, a ballon a four to one ballon at the uh, remote antenna tuner and i'm going to have the one coax run into the tuner is going to switch between the vertical and the uh, the multi-band 20 meter dipole which will work of course 17 15 and you know a 12 and 10. so uh anyway that's what i'm doing but I want to make this amp work because I don't have any other amp right now at the moment to use. And I want to get on SSB with my friend. I could use this thing on AM too. And I just, this is the easiest way. And I bought, that's kind of what I bought this thing for a few years ago. I found it on eBay. It was dirt cheap. I thought, that's a portable little amp I could take on a trip with me. If I wanted to work the higher bands of my transceiver, I could use it. I could modify it all the way down lower, maybe on 40 or 80. But I didn't, I don't think this is, there's not enough room to put cram that much of a, inductor and I already know what I'm going to do and I think the lowest this is ever going to go is 20 meters. I've already kind of pretty much decided that so I thought I might use this to amplify the little Mars mobile but that's a 40 80 meter transmitter you know 80 and 40 so it, it won't it's, this is never going to work down that far. I have another one of these amps similar that I might make it work on 80 and 40 only or maybe I could find another one of these because these things are these these are hard to come by, but they're when you find them they're pretty cheap. And it's a quick way to get a, a lot of high power. So anyway, but you can see they had the original 8950s in it, the one tube drive and a three, and this is the big transformer, and they were 13 volt filament tubes. And what I've got is I've got some brand new 6LF6s, which are the six volt filament tubes, but they're the high, they're the heavy duty high power version of these tubes. They're the really they're the really good sweep tubes. They're like they're, they're like the monster ones. So what I'm going to do is, but they're six volt filaments, so I'm I've got four tubes, so I'm going to rewire all the tubes in series. I mean the tubes are going to be like you know two in series with two in series to get because it's a 13 volt filament tube, and then what I want is I want 12.6 volt on the tube, 12.6 volts. So I'll just put two in series with two in series. I'll wire them up like that. But what I'm going to do is, since I have the shorter compact, compactron tubes, I'm going to be able to move this plate over just a little bit. So I'm going to have a lot more room between here and here. And that this is what this amp needs. I, you need it needs more space. This garbage is close. It's, it's crammed too close together. Like I said, they built these things primarily for the CB market. But this, this PAL Corporation, this these guys. This little company, they were pretty damn good. I mean, they, they knew what they were doing on these. These things actually worked. So it came from the early 70s. But you can see they used the crappy sockets. And I've got brand new Compactron ceramic sockets. So I'm going to take this out. I'm going to drill this garbage out of here. I'm going to put brand new sockets. All this is going to be rewired. And the one thing you have to do to make these things work on the lower bands, like I said, this thing would work from 10 meters all the way down to the bottom end of a 15 meter stock like it was. And what you have to do is the first thing is you've got these 27 microhenry chokes. You have to increase the value of these cathodes and these plate chokes all the way across. And probably about 40 to 50 mics would be microhenries on all these would probably be about right. But I already had some other ones, these five amp ones I got from Hammond. These are RF chokes, but they're they're like 250 microhenries. So I'm just, since I already have these, I'm just going to use these all the way across. 
So that'll that'll broadband net that part of it up. And then I think I've got another amp out in the garage that's got another one just exact same size and I, of the coil, right? So I can disconnect this and I can solder them both together. I can reposition them all, maybe point them to, or do something to where I get solder two of them together. Then I can put I can drill a hole here to add a band selector switch, put them like a matching knob. I'm going to change these knobs probably because I, I don't know. I got some. You know, I I do have I do have a switch that will match these knobs. Plus, if I do, I'm going to replace these. I'm going to put brand new ones of these on. But I got some other knobs that don't have this shittier insert here. They're the better looking ones, and I might I might put the, those on there instead, and then put this band selector switch, and I can just tap this coil. What am I doing here? So I can tap this coil here and just switch it to get it to work from 10, 15, or you know 10, 12, 15, and 17 and 20. I can do that and just change the taps, tap it in different spots. Then I can increase the value of this tuning cap just a little bit to cover all the way down to 20. So see, this is not going to be that hard to modify. The loading cap is a 0 to 500 and down to 20 meters, that 500 might still be big enough. If not, I could figure out a way to add a switch to where I could maybe have it where it puts a parallel cap on this. Or I could cut this thing off shorter, or I could put a little bit longer loading cap to where I could, you know, on the higher, do something when I'm switching this, it also switches, it adds another section onto it or something, you know. I could, I could figure something out. It wouldn't be that hard to do. But uh, the low and high power is going to go away. The one thing, now there were two guys in California back in the early 70s that started making, the one guy started making this, they used to work together, but then they d divided off, you know, they, they separated. And the one guy did these PAL amps, and the other guy did the Palomar amps. The guy that did these PAL amps was the guy that knew what the heck he was doing. Because the one thing he, he did, if you notice, this still has the original 8950 tubes in it. Well, if you pull an old pallet mar amp apart, you probably got about the 50th set of tubes it's had in it in its lifetime. And the whole key is, see that Zener diode he added right there? And what that does is, you know the way CBers were, right? They take a, you know, they take an amp that was designed for like 5 watts, 10 watts max, and they'd get a CB. If they could peak it up to 20 watts or so, or, you know, above 15 watts, you know, 12 watts, 15, 20 watts, they'd do it 25 watts. They would do it, and they'd modify the audio, and they'd have just have the thing just slam and power into this the input to this thing. Well, you know what happened, right? The cathode voltage would rise above the heater too far, and it would, it, it would you know, there's a, always a differential. I think the differential was at 10 volts. What, one way it was 20 volts, and the other way it was 10 volts. And I think this way it was 10 volts, maybe 20. But what they do is they have CBers would overdrive the inputs, and therefore it would overdrive the input to the next stage on these things. So the cathode would go way above the heater, and it would blow the tubes. So, you know, that's why those old Palomar amps, that's why most of them, have, if, it's, they, if they were owned by CBers, which the majority of them were, they've all had about a billion set of tubes in them. You know what I mean? They, they just blew those tubes left and right. But since this guy was smart enough to add that zener, well, it solved the problem, right? Really should have one here on the input too, which is what I am going to do. But what this did here was, and the other thing that, that we did that one thing, but the other thing also that it did was, the other key thing was, well, these tubes were have 13 volt heaters on them. Well, you really don't want the cathode above the heater, above that filament, because you might start amplifying hum. Well, look at this. The way that there is no input tuning on this thing. I mean, these things were noise. You know, it's basically, it's these, these are just basically a sweep tube linear, right? There's no input tuning or anything. So you do get attenuate. You do get most of your attenuation on the output. When it goes through this T network, a lot of it does get squished down to nothing. But there's still a lot going to get through. And, you know, like the old saying goes, garbage in, garbage out. And these things were notorious. There's no input tuning. So you got garbage in, garbage out. So if you put noisy crap in, like something you induce hum, this sucker right here is going to amplify it if that cathode's too far above the heater. So it did two things at once. It kept sea beers from blowing these things up, and it kept the hum out of it. So that's the other key thing. And what I'm going to have is I'm going to have the 6LF6. So like I said, I'm going to wire the tubes in series. Did I say that already? I'm going to wire the tubes in series. I'm going to have two in series with two in series. And that way I'll have, I'm going to try to make it to where it's 12.6 volts on each tube. I mean, I'm sorry, it's, 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 it's 6.3 volts on each tube, but with two in series, it should be 
you know, 12.6 volts across both tubes, like two tubes in series total, right? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to wire this one in series with this one. There's actually one tube missing. See they, how they got the notation here? There's actually three tubes here. They just added, they just didn't want to add it to the schematic because it makes it too large. But uh, the other cute thing about these old amplifiers was they call them bilinears, right? What they did is they put a little FET transistor in there for just a broadband. It's basically a noise amplifier. <laughs> But, you know, some of the old tube CB radios and stuff, of course, they, you know, they they were very, very, they weren't very sensitive. And they, if, I'm sure this probably helped to a certain extent. But I thought about it. If I could leave that feature in there, and I may just do it. You know why? Because it dawned on me. I looked on e eBay and Amazon. You can get those little block amplifier boards, those little small 12-volt boards, right? They just got a single transistor on them, and they're like 20 dB gain. They work from like, what, 5 megahertz up to like 2 gigahertz or something? If they're just a little broadband 20 dB amp, I'm just going to stick one of those in there. I'll just wire it to the relay, and I've, I found them. They're like shielded. You can get them for like less than 15 bucks on Amazon or eBay. I mean, that's that's the solution on this. I'll just buy one of those, and I'll just, you know, I'll just replace that junk, and I'll just mount it. I'm going to redo all this. I'm probably going to put a fuse holder down here. I'm going to drill it so it's on the outside. I don't like the way it's on the inside where you got to remove the cover. But uh, this is going to be an easy modification, and uh, I'm going to eliminate the, the low power mode completely. I'm just going to make it a high power. And I'm probably, what I'm going to do is, of course, I'm going to put an RCA jack in back for a key, the normal, you know, the fixed key. And like when I transmit, I'll have a line coming over where it fixed keys, the relays, the words, you know, it does it manually like that. But I'm also going to probably leave the auto sense circuit in there. I'm probably going to modify it, clean it up, you know, and redo it, beef it up a little bit. And I'll use that because I might want to, I might want to, I've got some CBs I was someday I'm going to modify. I got like an old Cobra I was going to modify for 10 meter use. So if I want to take a road trip somewhere and this thing works on 10, I could just throw the CB in there and I could do the modified, you know, for 10 meters or what have you. And I could just use that, right? Because the 10 meters is probably going to peak up again here. It's, it's actually the sun, sunspot cycle's already started. I think we're in for that, that, what do they call the Marauder Minium. I think that's coming up sooner or later here. I think it's going to be unavoidable. But it looks like the band's going to open up again this winter. It's already peaking up. 17 right now seems to be in pretty good shape. But So I might as well get this thing going so we can, when we take road trips, I'm probably going to drive back to Tulsa again one of these days within the next year or two. And if I could take this thing with me and maybe a modified 10 meter radio or my Linko, then it would work great. And I'd have, then I'd have some high power to use, you know, I like a temporary portable setup someplace, and this thing is really compact. That's why that's why I got it because it was so compact. But uh, you can see what I'm going to do. It's a pretty uh, simple modification, and I'm just going to make it to where the Linko. I'm going to run about five to ten watts into this thing and see what I get. <coughs> My friend and I we want to work on 17 meters, so on SSB, so I can make it work on SSB and AM both. So that's kind of where I am, and I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to just, you know, take some a scotch bright pad and rough this down a little bit and wipe it down with acetone good. And some good high temp wrinkle finish black paint. That'll look beautiful on that. So I'm going to black wrinkle this cap, this, this lid for it. I'll probably put a coat of wax on this front. I'll put new knobs on. I'm going to clean it all up. And oh, also, look what they did here. I can't believe they used to use this PVC, it's not PVC, but this PCB bolt material here. This FR, cheap FR4 stuff. But see what they did? I'm not sure why they'd want to use that for a... Uh, and plus, you know, if this thing bounces somewhere... I mean, I guess the tubes are in those sockets pretty tight. But those newer ceramic sockets, they're going to fit in there really tight. They're going to punch in there. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to pull this out of there. I'll just take some high-temp black paint and I'm going to paint this. That way, if it burns again, you won't see it. But I'll just paint this black all the way around on both sides, and that'll be good. And I'll rewire it. I'll clean up all that stuff, and I'll redo, you know, make it better. So anyway, this is uh, the part one of uh, probably another one or two videos to come. I'm going to take all the parts out of this thing. I'm going to clean up the cabinet so I get, I, basically, you want to redo all the grounds. I'm going to replace these relays, redo all this, the shorter tube to move this over, you know, modify a few things, and... Uh, and I think, like I said, I'm probably going to put the AM and sideband switch here if I want to ever use this, this thing for sensed RF input switching. So I'll probably just use that. I'll modify this switch for that and eliminate this high-low. This thing just needs to be on high one, one setting, and that's it. 
So that's it for now. This is W5HRNNO.